defeated him in a chess tournament in St. Louis. Neiman's admitted to cheating in the past, using an iPad with a chess engine that suggested moves to make. Well, now, Neiman is accusing Carlson and chess platform chess.com of launching a smear campaign against him. Lawyers for chess.com are dismissing the allegations. Tasha Stevens reporting. The House committee investigating the January 6th attack at the U.S. Capitol has formally issued its subpoena to Donald Trump. The nine-member panel sent a letter to the former president's lawyers on Friday demanding his testimony under oath by mid-November, as well as a number of corresponding documents. The decision by lawmakers to exercise their subpoena power comes a week after the committee made its latest case against the former president. More details at SRNews.com. The following program is sponsored by the Law Offices of Patrick L. Smith. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Get ready with your legal questions and call Patrick now. 877-943-9673. Again, that's 877-943-9673. The Law Office is open. And now your host, Patrick Smith. Oh, hi there, and welcome to another edition of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith, and we'll be with you for the next hour to answer your legal questions. Give us a call now, live and local lines, open studio lines. We'll get you and your legal question right on the air, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. Give us a call now. We're live and local, and we're going to be talking today all things... Small business. It's our small business spectacular. So call in if you want to do a 30 second shout out to your small business. We'll give you an open forum where you can do so. We thoroughly believe in supporting small businesses as they are the lifeblood of our capitalist society here. So give us a call. And uh, in addition to calling in with your legal questions, you can call in and give a shout out to your small business. 877 877- 943 9673. Again, live and local lines. 877 877- Nine four three nine six seven three. So we are giving you an opportunity to call in today with your legal questions or to give your small business a shout out. So you can do so. You can also email us if you have a question, Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. And you can also go to our website, attorneypatricksmith.com. Submit your questions directly through the website. Check out all our office locations, my bio information, schedule an appointment, and you can also check out archived versions of the radio show. So if you want to check that out, it's all available free of charge at attorneypatricksmith.com. But we want to hear from you this morning, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. Open studio lines will get you and your legal question or you and your shout out to your small business right on the air. So feel free to give us a call now, 877-943-9673. But I'm not alone this morning. I have a special guest joining me this morning is attorney Chris Hickson. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. We were talking before the show. You and I have known each other now 20 years. Uh, Yeah, about 22 years. That means we're getting older. Yes. So we actually, Chris and I are actually fraternity brothers who uh, went to undergrad together over at Stetson. And uh, gosh, I guess we kind of reconnected maybe, I don't know, like two or three years ago. Yeah, about that time. Yeah. So when about about the time we moved into Indian Rocks Beach and Chris is a practicing attorney uh, here in the Pinellas and Hillsborough County area. Is that correct? Yeah, primary. Yeah. But yes. we do stuff around the state. OK, so uh, tell the listeners a little bit more about your practice. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm going on, I think, 15 years now. Uh, we generate and work and we defend foreclosures and mainly do small business transactions we're registered agent we help with drafting articles and corporation which best way to do that um and then i also do bankruptcies and stuff like that for small businesses so for all you small businesses out there we have the man in the studio who handles a lot of small business work in addition to the bankruptcy side sometimes small businesses don't work out correct and it's uh, better to have tried and failed than never to have tried at all, they say. And uh, a lot of small businesses do work out, but unfortunately some don't. And that's when you need that that bankruptcy. And it can be uh, a critical thing to have in place to protect yourself. Just give everyone a brief preview of kind of the different types of bankruptcy. Because there's not there's more than one type of bankruptcy. Right. Yeah, there's, a, there's about six different ones. But the main, main ones are Chapter 7, where you just give up everything. 13, which is a private reorganization. 
and then you have a, two types of chapter 11s, one that was just created during COVID, one where the trustee controls everything and one where you can uh, trust uh, control everything. Okay. So there you go, folks. There's your bankruptcy rubric, if you will. 877-943-9673. Give us a call now. Attorney Patrick Smith. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show and our special guest today, Attorney Chris Hickson. So we're going to go to Clearwater and talk to Carol. Carol, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Hey, Carol, you there? Here. Can you hear me? I can hear you wonderfully, Carol. How are you today? I'm good. Good. How I'm calling help? because um, in the 50s, my mom purchased a half-acre property, a piece of, in the desert in Arizona. And it's for $3,000. Anyway, it was like buying swamp land in Florida. But anyway, she bought it, had it. And time went on. She never went to Arizona. She passed away. And myself and my sister, we pay taxes on it. Um, It's a whole $14 a year. And we just have continued paying taxes just as a remembrance to our mom, who had a dream that, you know, just didn't work. And the property has always been, they said, I would get notices saying someone wants to buy it $4,000 or $500. And I know I've seen it. It's nothing. Anyway, I received um, notice saying that someone wants to buy it for $11,000. And I would sell it. But the property is still in my mom's name. She passed away probably 20 years ago. I don't know how to put it in my name or my sister's name so that we actually could sell it. When your mother passed, ever, when your mother passed away, Carol, and I'm sorry about the loss of your mom, did she pass as a Florida resident or an Arizona resident? Michigan, actually. Okay, so she was a Michigan resident. So the answer is actually going to yeah. come down to Michigan law. It's going to be governed by okay. the great but state of Michigan. Did, okay, but she did die in Florida, if that makes a difference. No, it's governed by but her residency. Was. It's not really so much where okay. she died. So I think it's going to be a question for a Michigan lawyer. Now, in Florida, let's for the sake of this call, let's presume she was a Florida resident. It would be a matter of doing some sort of administration here to do an ancillary administration in Arizona. Since the property is in Arizona, uh, one of the attorneys I work with happens to have a law license in Arizona in addition to the state of Florida. So I'd be happy to introduce you to him if you wanted to get the Arizona side of it. But my guess would be it's going to be some combination of an answer between Arizona law and Michigan law. And because of the value of the property is so small, it wouldn't surprise me if there's some exemption. I'm not a Michigan attorney. I don't hold a Michigan law license, but you could call up there and find out what the exemptions are and whether or not you could just bring the administrative action for the probate essentially in Arizona or whether or not you need to do something precedent in the state of Michigan that unlocks the ancillary administration in Arizona. But either way, I'd be happy to put you in touch with a licensed Arizona attorney who can point you in the right direction with regard to the Arizona portion. Okay, thank you. I would like that. All right, and I like the fact that you pay the taxes more as a memorial to your mother. I think that's very sweet. Oh, well, thank you. Right. It was just always nice. So how would I get in touch with um, your Arizona So just call lawyer. me at the office on Monday. That number is 877-754-6767. Thank you very much. All right, Carol. We'll be happy to help. All right. Thanks for calling in. Love your program. Oh, thank you, Carol. I appreciate that. All right. You're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith. All right, Carol, wrapping up there. Open opens up a phone line. 877-943. 9673-877-943-9673 or email me patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. I'm attorney Patrick Smith. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show and today's special guest in studio, attorney Chris Hickson, here to answer all your small business and bankruptcy questions. So give us a call now, 877-943-9673. All right, next, let's go to holiday. Let's talk to Chris. Chris, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. 
Hey there, how are you? Great, Chris. How can we help? Sure. So, um, yeah, I moved from Wisconsin to Florida a few months ago. I'm um, a contractor. Um, now, it's been tough kind of to get everything in a basket with the transfer, but I guess my main question is um, my networking is really hard. So everything that has worked up in Wisconsin works very well. Um, I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot moving down here, I feel, sometimes. But um, networking is very tough. Um, I just, and even with the small contractor, I mean, it's, it's really hard climbing from the bottom. I'm the hardest worker there is in Wisconsin, Florida. Um, I would like to consider myself, but, um, yeah, do you have any, I know it's probably a magic question about networking. Um, but I mean, is there, I mean, with local contractors around here, are they, are they normally, I mean, is it small time like Facebook or do they actually, are people paying? for advertisement through Google? Well, I'm going to let Chris answer your question because Chris, I'm, do you have or any experience representing contractors in your practice? Uh, mainly my prior one was about defending their licenses with the state, but down here it's a very targeted market because Florida is all about land, all about the real estate, all about development. So it's going to be very difficult down here. Um, they have done stuff exactly like you've heard Facebook, uh, all that stuff. Uh, mainly what I've heard is people start by being subs, even though you're a general, they attach to another larger general, be a sub for them, and then break out once they get the work done by the people that have seen, and then they hire them out. And that's what I'm doing now. Um, I'm actually working for a guy, um, and obviously the pay is very little, but um, and, and I feel like Again, you know, and I have been getting jobs on the side, um, and I don't want to reach out to, like, Angie's List or anything like that. I, I guess I feel like, um, you know, it's really kind of the playing field is really safe and the claims for some of the bigger corporations, and it's really hard for a really hardworking um, carpenter or skilled tradesman to even get into the field and even make a splash. Well, I'll do my part, Chris. What's the name of the company? We'll give you a free 30-second spot right now. Go. Oh, uh, yeah, Last Build, L-A-T-Z-B-U-I-L-D. And you're a general contractor? General contractor, yes. I do tax um, fences. Um, I've actually built houses for 20 years, but um, I love tax. Tax is my, I love it. So, well, there you go, Chris. Hopefully that gets you some buzz. And uh, I think Chris gave you a great answer there. Awesome. I think it is a lot of just, you know, good old fat. I mean, when I started my practice as an attorney, and that's, you know, completely different from being a contractor, but I started with just meeting people, just going out and making myself available to go in and, you know, shake hands and, and learn who was around me. So it was less about introducing myself. It was more about learning, you know, who was in my community, you know, who are these great uh, other businesses we work with. And, uh, and I think that, you know, when you just make yourself a presence, uh, eventually your name gets around, people ask what you do and it goes from there. So I think that, uh, just making yourself available to meet new people, I think is a, is a great way, Chris. And it's a, it's a time investment, but I think it pays dividends that are definitely worthwhile in the long run. Okay. All right, Chris. All right. Awesome. Thank you for the information and thank you for the shout out, man. I really appreciate it. Happy to do it, Chris. Good luck to you and enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Okay. Perfect. You too. All righty. Great job on that answer, Chris. Great job. 877-943-9673. That's your live and local number. And uh, Chris hanging up opens up a line. So try to get in now. 877-943-9673. Or email us, Patrick, at attorneypatricksmith.com. All right. Next, we're going to Tampa. We're going to talk to Kyle. Kyle, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Hey, thank you, guys. Good morning very much. How are you guys? Great, Kyle. How can we help you? <laughs> So I had a ten o'clock question as it relates. It's in Florida as it relates to a apartment community, a large management company, and their responsibility to provide a, a safe, habitable place for for their tenants. Um, they're not doing anything specifically, like not replacing doors or anything, but the gates are constantly broken. There's tons of criminal activity. Um, I don't know if you know the the whole thing with catalytic converters now, but eight of those just got stolen from vehicles last weekend. Um, so we, we want to try and just write a letter to get out of the lease without having to pay penalties, but we're willing to pay penalties anyway, but I figured it might be worth perhaps sending a letter to address it. I actually did this myself. This was years and years ago. 
where I discovered quickly, if you become a squeaky enough wheel, they're happy to let you out of the lease just because they want you to be quiet. And that doesn't always right. work. And you're going to sort of live and die by the four corners doctrine, kind of what that lease says the landlord's responsibilities and duties are. However, as a general default rule, the landlord owes the tenant something called a covenant of quiet enjoyment. In other words, the landlord has a duty to the tenant to make sure that no third parties enjoy with the tenant's use of the leasehold estate so that they make sure that, you know, uh, trespassers aren't coming on the property and doing damage like you're mentioning right. there and that the property is in safe working condition and not hazardous to the tenant or their guests. So that's what you're referencing. It's called the covenant of quiet enjoyment. And it's probably in your lease, Kyle. We would need to take a look okay. at these obviously with you and that's going to tell you kind of what leg you have to stand on. It may be such that the landlord has breached and there's certainly going to be more than likely a provision in the lease that gives the landlord an opportunity to remedy the breach, uh, usually for something like 30 days or two weeks, something of that nature after they're informed of the breach. And then you see what they do. Uh, hopefully they fix the matters and secure stop the theft and uh, repair the gate and make everything better and build that duty of the uh, covenant of quiet enjoyment. So, Chris, anything to add to that? Uh, just. I've represented landlords, so about the least amount of money. Um, again, it's all reasonableness. I know that's not for everybody, but we're attorneys. We're going to tell you that it's reasonableness. Um, maybe that, maybe you could tell them, you know, hire Chris, our last caller, go fix their fence, their gate, get it fixed, because they might have a, a, a prolonged time with all the hurricane issue right now on fixing structures. So reasonableness and the squeaky wheel does get answered well kyle and there's your answer I and mean, that's kind of both sides of the coin mine more from the tenant side and chris giving you more of the landlord's perspective so hopefully that helped sure, you out sure it did very much you mind if i plug a local business please go 30 seconds <laughs> all right rdi power uh it's a diesel repair shop and fleet management company in brooksville florida just moved twenty thousand square feet of facility my beautiful sister and wonderful brother-in-law run it and i've been doing it for the last 15 years serving tampa and love to continue to serve the market. All right. Thank well, you, you, did, you did your part this morning, Kyle. What station are you listening on? 1025 The Bone. Thank All you, right. guys. Kyle, we appreciate you, buddy. Have a great Saturday, okay? Well, thank All right. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith. Open phone lines, 877-943-9673. This is our small business spectacular edition of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. So we encourage you to call in either with your legal question or to give your small business or a small business uh, a special shout out. So call in now and uh, give us a shout out for your small business. We'll give you uh, 30 seconds to plug whatever small business you'd like to promote because uh, we support small businesses here at the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. 877-943-9673. That's your open studio lines. 877-943-9673. And joining me in studio this morning, very special guest, Attorney Chris Hickson, who practices in small businesses and bankruptcy related matters. So he's here to field those questions and already assisted on a couple. So we are happy to assist you any way we can this morning with your legal questions or to give you an opportunity to give a shout out to a small business uh, that you want to promote. 877-943-9673. 877-943-9673. Or email me, Patrick, at Attorney Patrick Smith. Dot com. All right, Chris, next, uh, we were talking uh, before the show about the top five reasons that people often find themselves up in a bankruptcy situation. Why don't you tell the listeners a little more about those kind of reasons that drive people to considering or ultimately doing a bankruptcy? Sure. The uh, the most common reasons are just life, um, the big life events that just hit you when you don't expect it. Uh, number one is always medical bills. People just get sick. You can't control it. COVID was the most expansive one that's ever really hit this nation. So one is always medical bills. Two, unfortunately, divorce. It's the high rate, but when you divorce, it is just financially crippling for most people because the debt has to be distributed, your assets have to be torn down, you have houses, stuff like that. So divorce is always a number one leading uh, reason as well. Then you have the issues of just uh, the loss of job. And again, COVID showed that. That's why bankruptcies ticked up um, amazingly, uh, on that. And, uh, those are, those are all the top three, the, a lot of the other reasons are just kind of in between, but those are the top three and fitting with the theme of today, 
uh, your business just stopped making income now, the loss of the job. You mentioned divorce leading to a bankruptcy. Right. And I can understand that. Do you ever see the opposite? Do you ever see that someone got married and that led to a bankruptcy? Um, yeah. If uh, the other spouse's spending habits got really bad really fast, they inherited a, like they didn't understand their spouse's financial situation before they got married. And then say like their student loans came into a default or they had something else in the background that they didn't know caused them now to be legal proceedings against them, like garnishments and levies and assessments and stuff like that. So have you seen that? Have you seen the case where one spouse kind of materially misrepresented to the other spouse, either their earning potential or their spending habits or their, or both on the same? I mean, I guess that would be a perfect storm if one's lying about their spending habits mm -hmm. and the other's lying about their earning potential and then they marry the two forces, you know, collide. Uh, uh, Personally, no, I have heard many anecdotes about anecdotes about it around the state. And actually, um, without one of our fraternity brothers may have been in that situation before, but he got out of it. Well, there you go. So, all right, next we're going to go to Bradenton and we're going to talk to Joel. Joel, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Hi. Hey, Joel, how can we help? Um, I have a question about bank bankruptcy. The man is here. Chris will be happy to answer your question. Fire away, Joel. Um, in 20, early 2020, like, um, I was March, uh, I got COVID and it, uh, about killed me. Um, uh, I spent 30, uh, 34 days in the hospital and I ran up a bill of, uh, $550,000. Wow. Oh, yeah. And, um, which I, there's no way I could ever pay. Um, I was working, I was making 17 bucks an hour at the time. So, and raising two boys, I had two teenage boys living with me. Um, how, how old are your boys, by the way? Uh, right now they're 21 and 19. Wow. And then next week I will officially have a 17 year old. So I know what it's like to have a teenage son. So, uh, I can only, <laughs> I, I can only imagine what it was like going through the health battle while you're trying to raise a couple boys, but Joel, it's, uh, that's a tough road, but I interrupted your story. Go ahead. Luckily, I had some parents that uh, didn't live too far away that uh, put my boys up while I was in the hospital. Um, and anyway, I, uh, long story short, um, I ran through my life savings. Um, uh, when I got uh, uh, when I got out of the hospital, my, my cardiologist told me that my heart was beating at ten percent, and there really wasn't a whole lot I could do about that. And I'm uh, fifty four years old, and um uh okay, I ran through my life savings and now I'm getting uh I got uh well I planned on one of the biggest things was I planned on living in my apartment for six months more than I did, but um the Florida government, DeSantis, I don't know who decided to stop paying federal relief to um to me so and so i had to renege on the the last couple months of my lease in my apartment and that's another nine thousand dollars um i mean it just yeah i'm getting hit from all these angles and i want to um i can't i haven't worked since then i really so your, I mean, your, can't. is your question for Chris whether or not you are a candidate for bankruptcy or what type of bankruptcy would be optimal? Is that your question? Well, I'm sorry. I should get – I should. Uh, my question is that I am currently um, – Cooley Law School is handling my bankruptcy and uh, pro bono because I don't have uh, $2. Um, is that the way I should go or should I be looking somewhere else? Please. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Chris will be happy to answer your question. Go ahead, Chris. Sure. I, I actually know that program called the Cooley Law School program. Great program. They do it in conjunction with the middle district of Florida bankruptcy uh, division and judge McEwen is, just raves about it. And I've actually volunteered um, before I, I wasn't able to continue with it, but great program. You're in good hands there. Okay. If you can't afford it, they know what they're doing. They're supervised by 
a long time practicing bankruptcy attorney. Uh, I do believe it's Victor Vecchio. Um, again, you're you're in good hands there, and if if you don't have a the ability to pay for a uh, an outside attorney, that's a that's a great program. Um, so I think you're doing the right thing. They're probably putting you through a Chapter Seven um, to to just basically wipe your debts, make yourself even more available for government assistance now to get you somewhere. But you're you're doing the right thing, in my opinion. Thank you very much. Um, can I ask you one more quick question, please? Go ahead, Joel. Um, I went to the DMV two days ago to get my address changed on my driver's license so I could vote in the upcoming election. Um, they took my driver's license away from me and said, show up at the sheriff's office next week, Tuesday at 1245. Do you have any idea what that could be about, or I have is none. It a money thing? I have none, but it sounds like there may be something outstanding, uh, maybe an unpaid ticket. I don't, uh, it, a ticket by, maybe? Yeah, by the way, so Kendall, if you're listening, go ahead and call in. Attorney Matthew Kendall is our criminal defense attorney we work with most regularly, and uh, sure. and he may be able to to chime in on that if he's listening to the show today. Or, or Chris, do you have any insight on that as far as what could be leading to to that? Right, uh, criminal wise, I don't know. But if it's an outstanding debt, you need to let the the Cooley firm know that uh, the Cooley law firm, pro, the, the Cooley program that oh, you're no. in, let yeah. them know to list it as a debt, and then they can't do things to enforce that debt, like take away your license. And it'll get revoked. The, there's a lot of people that have DMV holds that are lifted because you file bankruptcy. Well, there you go, Joel. Thank you. All right, Joel. Good luck to you. I kind of know, this was kind of looking to know what to expect when I show up to the uh, sheriff's office because I don't know what I've done wrong as a person um, other than, yeah. Um, well, just let your attorney know and and then the attorneys who are helping you and they should be able to guide you on kind of what to expect or, or maybe send someone to attend uh, that visit to the sheriff's office with you so you're not alone. But Joel, I and a lot of other people are going to be praying for you. So we're, we're going to be supporting you and holding you up and you call back and let us know how things turn out. Okay. Yes, sir. All righty, Joel. Thank have a great Saturday. Yes, sir. Thanks for calling. All righty. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith. With me today, special guest, Attorney Chris Hickson, 877-943-9673. Today's our small business spectacular. So you can call in and ask your legal question, or you can call in and give a shout out to your favorite small business, either here locally or anywhere. So 877-943-9673. And uh, us wrapping up that call opens up a phone line. So give us a call now, 877-943. 9673. Or you can email me, Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. All right, next we're going to Brandon and we're going to talk to Rob. Rob, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Good morning. How are you? I'm great, Rob. How can we help you? Um, I had solar panels installed in my house about 15 months ago and they've never been operational. The company has drugged their feet to get out to me. I went and inspected the solar panels yesterday on my roof and my shingles are ripped. It's all torn up. I call them, tell them I just want them removed, and I want my roof repaired. They're telling me that I have a contract, and uh, there's nothing I can do. I need to continue to pay my $45,000 bill on uh, these solar panels. I thought you were going to say you looked up there and there were no panels. (laughs) That would explain why they're not working. Uh, Well, Uh, They've drilled plenty of holes in my roof. uh, I had a one-year-old roof when they installed them, so they basically ruined their one-year-old roof. That would have been interesting, though. They they blew away with the end. They just blew it off. That must have been it. Uh, I I think, well, number one, you certainly signed a service agreement with this company, correct? Yes. Yeah, so look at the service agreement. There's going to be some sort of remedy in there for you as far as a warranty. How long did you say the panels had been installed? 15 months, July 2nd of 2021, when they were installed. So have you taken a look at that agreement to see what your warranty is on the panels? Uh, I have a 10-year warranty, but I haven't checked to see what the service agreement is so based on uh, they what they're requiring I'd, like their, or what their obligations are. But I feel like there has to be some type of statute of limitations that they have to uphold their end, and they're trying to hold the contract against me, but they're not holding anything against themselves. Well, I think before we looked at any statute of limitations, we, of course, looked at the terms of the agreement or the contract that you have in place first. Yep. So have you reached out to the company and said, hey, they're not working? Uh, I'd like... Uh, my wife calls once a week. That's not nearly enough. I'm yeah. just kidding. Uh, no, so, so I'm guessing you're not getting a response at all if she's still calling once a week. 
Negative. I, I called yesterday and told them I just want them removed. I want my roof replaced. And they're like, well, you have, an, you have a contract. And I was like, well, you know, don't you have to uphold your end of the contract as well? Well, here's what I would do, and this is what we've told Patricia and Lakewood Ranch uh, for you know for weeks. It's probably to the point where you need to write a letter, and I would okay. send the letter two different ways. I'd send it regular mail. There's a presumption that they get that letter, and I think that after that, you you also send it. There's no way to prove the phone calls, really. It's a matter of how can you prove that you tried to amicably resolve this without taking up the judge's time. Judges really appreciate, I think, they really appreciate a plaintiff who can show them, Your Honor, we tried everything to not bother you with this matter. And only after we couldn't get anywhere, then we had to seek relief from the court. Chris, do you agree with that? A hundred percent. Yeah. So I think that's your next step, Rob, is go ahead and just put together a letter if you find yourself or you or your wife find yourself overly emotional about the situation, I say write that version where you get all the the fury and the fire and brimstone out and then burn it, and then write a version that is, you know, the Joe Friday version, just the facts, and then tell them what you want at the end. We want these operable within the next 30 days, and then sign the letter. I gave them that opportunity on a phone call six months ago. Put it in writing. I think that's the next step. Put it in writing. If they don't respond to that, then I think you get an attorney have you make the demand respond to the attorney you know where this is headed yep well thank you so much for your time rob i appreciate you calling have a great day okay thank you all right this is the attorney patrick smith show i'm attorney patrick smith 877-943-9673 877-943-9673 live and local lines open uh, we actually have an open line now with rob wrapping up his call and we're going to take a couple other calls here. But, Chris, before we do, I want to give you a chance to give out your contact information. If people didn't necessarily want to talk to you on the air, they, you know, maybe a little timid about bankruptcy. There is a little bit of a stigma a lot of times with people having to go through a bankruptcy, I think. So they may not want to talk on the air about it. And uh, if they want to talk to you privately, how can they get in touch with you? Sure. Yeah, I, I work over at Siegel and Shoe. That's uh, S-E-G-A-L and Shoe, S-C-H-U-H, Law Group. We're right off of Highway 19 North, uh, right over by the Sam's Club area. My phone number is 727-824-5775. My email, which is the best way to get a hold of me, is chris, C-H-R-I-S, at seagullshoe.com. All right. So there you go. Uh, 877-943-9673 to be part of today's show. 877-943-9673. I'm Attorney Patrick Smith, and joining me in the studio, special guest, Attorney Chris Hickson. Next, we're going to Pine Island, and we're going to talk to Kathleen. Kathleen, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call. Um, you know, we had a horrible hurricane, and behind um, behind our home are, are a few empty lots. And there's a 30 to 40 foot tree that fell down and smashed onto our land. Oh no! So, in crushed our trees and things. So I tried getting in touch with the owner. I know I I have their address and things like that. And then, um, but I can't get in touch with them by phone. And um, I'm not sure if they actually live there. So I called the code, um, Lee County code. And they said that that I would be at fault it, or cited because the tree is on my land, even though it fell. That doesn't make any sense to me. So I thought that was an absurd answer. Well, I'll let Chris add his thoughts <clears throat> if he would like, but we had a caller call in to our uh, Hurricane Ian special we did where people just sort of called in and kind of told us what was going on in there because the, the show now reaches uh, the reached the swath of Hurricane Ian's path. So we had calls from all over the state that day. And one of the calls was this question, what about the fallen tree case? And I went and was actually planning on doing a follow-up piece on this today. So your call is perfectly timed. Kathleen, it is a matter of what I discovered, uh, whether or not the tree is living or dead. Uh, It comes down to if it's a living tree, uh, then there's a different outcome versus if it's a dead tree. Basically, the short version is this. If it's some sort of uh, dead, decrepit tree that's in like a known hazard, the property owner where the tree is located can be on the hook for that. But if it's a living tree... Uh, and it blows onto your property, typically you or your insurance is my understanding will be responsible for that damage. So Chris, anything to add to that? Um, the practical answer to that too, is you always have the right of contribution to sue them later on. So you don't get in trouble with the city and have liens attached to you 
typically I advise clients clean it up yourself, send the bill to the owner and deal with it that way because it's easier to get in touch with somebody else later than have the city and the government coming out. So this is kind of a situation, say you co-owned a property with someone and that person wasn't paying their portion of the expenses or the taxes. You can leave it unpaid if you want to just pay your half, but guess what? They're not going to care. They're going to come after you as a property owner, whether you're paying your half uh, or not. If the full tax bill is not getting paid. So what Chris is saying is pay the full bill and then go after the other person under the right of contribution he referenced. Okay. It just seems absurd to me that someone damages your property and then you're, you're at fault. It, it, I, I completely understand your perspective, but at the same time, just playing devil's advocate, so to speak, they didn't really damage your property. I mean, if it was the hurricane, it was the hurricane damaging your property. It's a different set of facts if your neighbor goes and chops the tree down and has it fall on your property. I mean, that's obviously a different set of facts. So probably not as much initiated by the, the neighbor as you're saying. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I appreciate your, your, thank you for your suggestions, and um, I guess we'll, we'll go with that. Yeah, Kathleen, thank I'm you. sorry it's not the Please answer go. you wanted to hear, but I do think it's the uh, the best answer given the hand you've been dealt, okay? This is a great show, by the way. Oh, thank I you. Found it. I appreciate it. What, <laughs> station, what station are you listening on, Kathleen? Um, I have to look. Wait a minute. I don't want to lose you because I don't have internet. Uh, I am listening to, oh, 102.5 The Bone. All right. Well, Kathleen, we appreciate you and all our other Bone listeners out there, okay? <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. <laughs> Thank you. You right. too. Bye-bye. All righty. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith, 877-943-9673, 877 877- Nine four three nine six seven three. Next, we're going to a very patient Rachel in Brandon. Rachel, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Hi, thank you. Hey, Rachel, how can we help? Um, my husband passed away about seven years ago. Um, we, he had some savings account and some stock, but my name wasn't on it. Is there any way? I didn't, he didn't have a will or anything. So, is there any way? Do I need to go through a probate? Is it worth it? Uh, I didn't know. It depends. So you said there was no will, and uh, I'm sorry about the death of your husband. How many years were you married? Thank you. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. Yeah. How many years were you married? Uh, 20. Wow. Yeah. I'm at 19 myself, and I would be apoplectic without my wife. So I, I, I'm so sorry, Rachel. I'll say a prayer for you. Uh, do you remember or do you have knowledge of how much approximately is in the account? I'm thinking probably under 2000 Okay. So if it's less than six, I think we would probably suggest trying something called a disposition without administration. You don't even have to hire an attorney. It's really just a matter of getting certain items together and like your marriage license, death certificate, the uh, copy of your late husband's paid funeral bill, the statement for the account, and you can go down to the courthouse and probably take care of it yourself if it's uh, less than that $6,000 threshold. So I think that's probably the advice that I would give you. Okay, what was that a call again? Dis- disposition, Dis- of- disposition without administration. Okay, and I'll, I appreciate it. I'll give out the office number here later in the show, Rachel. And um, just to round out the rest of the facts, were there any children involved? Yes, they're adults now. But they're they're common, meaning you know all of his children were also all of your children. Yeah, and vice versa. Okay, yeah. So even if it had to go through a um, more under the probate, the intestacy rules as the surviving spouse with all common children, you should take a hundred percent of the assets. You wouldn't have to split it. That's different. If it's like he had children from a prior marriage, the statute would then split it between the spouse and the descendants. So that would be a different outcome there. That's why having children that are uncommon could be outcome determinative. Okay. All right. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Rachel. Good luck. I'll give out that office number as soon as we hang up. Okay. Okay, thank All you. Right, bye-bye. All right, you listen to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. That number to reach me at the office if you want to schedule your complimentary consultation for estate planning, 877 I'm sorry, 754. Almost did it. 877-754-6764. Again, the office number to reach us Monday through Friday, 8 to 430. You can call and get scheduled for your complimentary estate planning consultation, 877-754-6764. You can also... Email me directly, Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com or submit your appointment request directly through the website, attorneypatricksmith.com.
Com. And, our, and by the way, something came up where someone was asking about if we've raised our fees. I just celebrated 16th anniversary of my practice uh, back in September, and we've never changed the will fee. It's still $75, and my trust package fee is still $695, and that includes all the accompanying documents, the power of attorney, pour over will, healthcare surrogate, the deed for the homestead. So no is the answer. Those rates have not gone up in 16 years and no immediate plans to change those rates. So we're still holding steady at those uh, 2006 rates, uh, making it a little easier for Florida. A lot of things are getting more expensive. So if we can, let's keep estate planning affordable for everybody. So 877-754-6764. That's your number to reach me at the office if you want your complimentary estate planning consultation. All right, next we're going all the way down to Fort Myers and we're going to talk to Mike. Mike, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Well, thank you. Uh, t- thanks for taking my call. Yeah, Mike, hey, how are things down in Fort Myers? Well, I'm a truck driver and I was listening to your show and i going through Fort Myers right now. It still looks a lot still see a lot of blue tarps around yeah. put it that way on the roofs. But anyway, I got a question. My daughter's a renter. She rents in St. Pete. She's a school teacher. She's been renting from these apartment buildings for three years now. Each year it's gone up probably fifty dollars, seventy dollars a year. And now this year she just got a notice and they're raising it four hundred dollars for rent. For a 780 square foot one bedroom apartment up to $1,700. Is that legal to go up $400? If the lease says they can. I think if the lease uh, gives the landlord permission to raise the rent, I don't, I doubt severely that the landlord would be operating outside of the lease. Now that's possible. And without reviewing the lease with your daughter, I don't know for sure, Mike. Yeah. But I would say yeah, just, yeah. you know, without looking at any paperwork, as a general rule, landlords typically draft lease through their attorney. They know what it says. They know what they want in there and they usually stick to it. Okay. So if they're going to raise the rent, they usually put that provision in there so that they can. But Chris, anything to add to that? Yeah. Um, it, it also, it might be, it might not be an auto renew lease or they terminate and sign a new lease each time. If that's the case, yeah, it's legitimate. Plus with the market, the way that it's been, this has been going across the state in the, uh, of Florida completely, and it's not a rent control state like uh, New York. So, unfortunately, yeah, yeah it, it sounds legal. There you go, Mike. Yeah, I just, yeah, well, thank you. I just found it a little ridiculous. You know, it's never been laid on a rent or anything. Think well, we were just, just talking about that. Lot on here, yeah, well, and I don't know terrible, what's going on out know. there, but like clients are reaching out and saying, hey, have you raised your, your rates? And you're, you're making my point yeah. for me. So thanks for the call because right. everything yeah. is getting more expensive. So as much as possible at the yeah. law office, we're trying to keep things static there as far as billings because uh, the good Lord knows everything else is getting more expensive. And, and you're giving us oh, an example of that. The rent rates are going yeah. up, and uh, that has yeah. a lot to do with the population influx that we've had here. In this, the demand's yeah. just gone up. And one thing we know, when yeah. demand goes up and supply is scarcer, prices are going to skyrocket. And that's what we're experiencing right. here. Yeah, it's just make tough for people to get ahead of the game, you know, stuff like that. You know, very, especially being a school teacher. Very you know. tough time but right it, now. Oh, she's a school teacher. She, yeah. Yes, yes, she is. Well, a thank third you for, grade teacher. And, God yeah, bless but, her. Yes, yes, yes. Your your daughter must but have any, the patience of a saint, Mike. She really does. She could get a better job than that, but she enjoys working with kids. So that's it's, she's fun. Well, uh, Mike, it sounds like you raised a good one, and we wish her the best of luck. Okay. All righty. All right. Thanks for taking my call. Have yeah, a good day. You too, Mike. Drive Bye. safely. All right. 877-943-9673. That's your live and local number to be part of the show. 877-943-9673. I'm attorney Patrick Smith. This is the attorney Patrick Smith show. And we're with you for about another five minutes or so. And our special guest today, attorney Chris Hickson, small business and bankruptcy attorney here to answer all related questions to those matters. So 877-943-9673 or email me, Patrick at attorney Patrick Smith. Dot com. Next, we're going to go to Bradenton and talk to Susan. Susan, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Thank you, Patrick Smith, and I really appreciate your very informative show. I wanted to give a um, shout out to two local businesses in Bradenton uh, with the holidays coming up. Fire holiday away. Traditions. All right. We have holiday traditions at myornaments.com, personalized Christmas ornaments. Wonderful small business, nice family. Please support them. Um, also, Flower Fanatic, Super Florist, State Road 64 on Manatee Avenue in Bradenton. Full service. Get your holiday flowers and arrangements there. When I, I will oh, share really? my 
I will share my Flora's story with you, Susan. Uh, when I was dating my yeah. wa- when I was dating my wife, I would actually take her a rose, and I was taking her. I think I would take her a rose for every month we were dating, and uh, that got really expensive after a while. So I eventually just planted a rose garden at my parents' house, and uh, and that was cheaper just to be able to trim the roses uh, directly from the, the garden. So uh, yeah, well, Susan, we appreciate you calling in and giving those businesses a couple of shout outs. And you said one was Holiday Traditions. Holiday Traditions, and they're at myornament.com. And you can get uh, thousands of different ornaments personalized with someone special's name on it. And, that's and right. then Flower Fanatic is at uh, 2711 East Manatee in Bradenton also. And right now they have roses. If you need them, $9.99 a dozen. You can't beat that deal. That's a great price. So very fresh, long-lasting, direct from the the uh, grower. So you, you could only be that price if that. you had your own rose garden, Susan. That's true. That's true. Well, thank you. And thank you again. I love your show and, and all the information you provide to so many people. Susan, you're the reason why we do it. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Take right. care. Yes, ma'am. All right. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. To give us a call, 877-943-9673. 877-943-9673. Or shoot us an email, Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. My special guest today, Attorney Chris Hickson. So, Chris, someone's considering a bankruptcy. What sort of information do they need to bring to that consultation with you? Uh, typically, we send out about a 21-page questionnaire. Oh, it's know, that's 21 pages. 21. It's gotten shorter. That's good. Exactly. Uh, but basically, we just need to know your information, like your personal information, social stuff like that. So we can run a credit report, anything you own, any of your credit card debts, any debts that you have. That's really the basics. And then where you work, where your where your spouse works, and know your income level. Then we can advise you what type of uh, bankruptcy is best for you, if at all. Well, and talk a little bit about how bankruptcy is not a death sentence. No, no. Uh, and, and no offense to the older generation from ours, but bankruptcy used to be a stigma. Okay. St- and bankruptcy, oh, I didn't pay my bills. I'm a bad American. No, that's not what it is. From creation, the, the the legislature created it as a tool to assist people that got into life situations like we explained, okay? Um, it's a tool to help people be able to survive. Some people abuse it, and the last iteration of the bankruptcy law was to stop that, but it's to help you get out of uncontrollable debt. Um, and so you need to look at it as a tool, um, as something that's created to help you and to help our society economically get flowing, because if not, Everybody's going to be in debt. Nobody can pay any bills. I've got news for you, though. At the start of that, you said, no offense to the older generation. Correct. We're a lot closer to that older generation than we were 20 years ago now. And you said that, and I was like, oh, is he talking about us? And then you carved us out from it. So I appreciate that. That means you think we're part of the younger generation. I'm not. I'm, yeah, I'm delusional, but I'm going to be that way. How old are you now? I'm 39. 39? When do you turn 40? Uh, next year. Well, we got to and a party for that. Of course. So, all righty. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith. Chris, before we wrap up the show, give out your contact information one more time. Well, uh, if you if you don't mind, I'd like to actually give out my wife's small business information. Fire it's away. Delphian Creations. Find her on uh, Facebook. It's um, She does a bunch of crafts, considering it's about the uh, what's coming up anyways, the holiday season. season. She does embroidery, masks, um, cake building, and all that good stuff. All right. Well, there you go. Look her up. And uh, you can find us on uh, the web at attorneypatricksmith.com. Check out prior radio shows, our bio information, all our office locations, submit an appointment request, or uh, feel free to just call the office line directly, 877-754-6764 to get your complimentary appointment with me, Attorney Patrick Smith, 877-754-6764. No Gators prediction this week. It's their bye week, but be with us next week when we will have our prediction for the Florida-Georgia game. Next week, 877-943-9673. Everyone stay safe, God bless, and go Gators.